one says what percentage of 40 is 8. Now I'm going to work it both ways just for teaching purposes. Um, first we could say all right, 40, 40 times what over 100? And we know that we call this part here the rate, the, per, the rate of percentage that gives us 8. So algebraically, we know that it's sending as 40x over 100 is equal to 8. We could simplify this and we would get 2 fifth when we simplify it. So 2 fifth x is equal to 8. Now in order to find x we could multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 2 fifth which would be 5 over 2. So this will leave us with x is equal to I will know that that's going to be 8, 5, 40 and 40 divided by 2 is 20 so we get x would be 20 percent or easily we could just say um divide it by the base so we could divide since we're given the base of 40 and the percentage is 8 i mean the percentage which is the product or the result is 8 we could just simply say 8 divided by 40 is equal to 1 fifth and 1 fifth as a percentage is 20 percent so therefore answer is going to be b Question 2, the number 3.14063, written correct to three decimal places. So we have one, two, three decimal place. To the right of zero is six. So that's a number that is greater than five. So we can add one. So we get 3.141. So our answer would be B. And both questions one and two have been repeated. All right. Now we have 4.3 times 0 0.37. Yes, and the picture quality is a bit ugly, but that's the best I can do for this video. So if 4.3 times 0 0.37 is equal to 1.591, then 0 0.43 times 370 is what? What a normal light, and a normal light to compare them. So I like to write them beside each other. So so we, I can see the, the, the changes that have happened. So, okay, this now becomes 0 0.43 times 370. This gives me 1.591. Now, it's just a little trick, and I do, it not, may not be conceptually correct because I'm going to say, I'm going to say the decimal point moves. I would know that decimal point does not move. All right, but just for teaching purposes, I'm just forgetting the answer purpose. So we have 4.3 and it becomes 0 point, compare it, it becomes 0 0.43. So that means that it be divided by 10. And then we have 0 0.37 becomes 370. That means we multiply it by 1, 2, 3. So it multiplied by 1,000. So I'm going to move it so called moving up we wouldn't shift it one place to the left that's our division so we divide it by 10 so shift one then it goes then it's multiplied by 1000 so we go okay one two three so then we have one five nine point one so what we say if the first the first change here was it divided by 10, we divide the result that they have, the final answer here, which is 1 point divided by 10. So we shift it one place to the left, shift the number one place to the left. Then it's now multiplied by 1000 to get 370. So then say, okay, multiply, so we shift it now three places to the right so we're gonna one two three so our answer becomes one five nine point one question three the first three common multiples of three four and six are so common what they have in common are multiples so let's run through our three times quickly so we have three Nine, 
12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. Then let's look, look at 4. So 4 will give us 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and 32. Could go one more. All right, 36. After in part three, we could go one more. Well, three up to 36. We don't know it three times. I'll go four times. And then six will give us six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. All right, so common, common multiples would be what they have in common. They have 12 in common. So this have 12, this have 12, this have 12. They have 24 in common, so they have 24, 24, 24. This and this have 36. I would know that 3, 12 is also 36. So they have 12, 24, and 36 in common. All right, so if 350 is shared in the ratio, 2 to 5, the smaller share is, so we know that the total ratio, the total amount of share is going to be 2 plus 5 and that gives us 7. The smaller share is 2. So 2, 7 times 3, 50. So 7 into itself, 1. 7 to 35, 7, 5, 35, so we get 50. So then we have 2 times 50 gives us 100. So then our answer is all right so there are 40 students in a class and the girls make up 60 percent of the class 25 percent of the girls wear glasses how many girls in the class wear glasses all right so we said there are 40 students in the class and girls make up girls make up 60%. Alright, so let's find out. 60% of 40 is what? Let's go ahead and find 60%. So 60% of 40. So we have 10 into this goes, 6 times 10 into this goes, 10 times 10 into itself, 1. 10 into 40 goes, 4 times, and we know 6 4 is 24. So that's 24 girls. And then it says that 25% of the girls wear glasses. So we can find 25% of 24. We know that 25 is ending on a quarter. So that's going to be 24 divided by 4, and that gives us 6. So 6 girls wear glasses. And yes, my handwriting is very beautiful. So 6 girls wear glasses. All right, question seven. Question seven says, if the universal set U equal one, two, three, four, five, and H has the, comp the elements three, four, six, then H prime is what? Now we know that H prime, or sorry, H complement means everything that is outside of the set H. So we know complement means everything that is not in the set H. So let's look at what. So we have U is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the set U. And we know the set H has 3, 4, 6. So complement is everything that is not in the set. So if we know what is in the set, then we can tell what is not in the set. So both universal set and they and H have three, they both have four, and they both have six. So what is left? What is outside? What is not in the set is one, two, and five. So therefore, H complement is the set of one, two, and five. So one, two, and five is not in the set. They are outside, and complement means 
what is not in the set. Question 8. Which of the following statements describe the set of integers greater than negative 3 but less than 6? Now, normally I would tell students to read out all of these, to read A2, A2, D. However, what I'll tell you that most times, most of the inequality signs are normally turned this direction. When you have compound inequality, no matter what it is, they always turn that direction. Whether it's less than or equal to whatever the sign, it's always that direction. And then the conditions here. So, um, we could just easily eliminate the ones that have the incorrect direction, naturally. So we can easily eliminate before we even read or interpret anything. So this one, these, this, wrong direction, this, wrong direction. So it's between these two now. So it says now, greater than, but less than. Okay, it's easy, because once it doesn't say equal to, I we know that this would be less than or equal to. So once there's no equal to, it's simply the one without the little stroke at the bottom. So our answer is going to be D. Alright, question 9. Alright, question 9 says, X and Y are two finite sets such that the number of elements in X is equal to 9, the number of elements in X intersect Y is equal to 4, and the number of elements in X union Y is equal to 15, then the number of elements of Y is. Now we know a little formula. So we know that once you have your number of elements in X union Y is equal to the number of elements in X plus the number of elements, sorry, that bad, number of elements in Y, subtract the number of elements in X intersect Y. So then number of elements in the union would be 15, number of elements in X is 9, number of elements in this, this, this is what we want to find, number of elements in Y, put that back same way, minus the number of elements in the intersection, which is 4. So using our algebraic knowledge, 9 minus 4 gives us 5. So on this side we have 5 plus number of elements in Y equals to 15, right, here I'm going right up. Alright, so then we can just subtract, so what? 5 plus what number gives you 15? That's 10, so therefore, Solving, you can say subtract 5 from both sides and we get 10. Alright, question 10. That's funny. 10, moving on to question 10. Not funny, but corny. Alright, so in the Venn diagram, item 10 refers to the following Venn diagram. In the Venn diagram, X represents the set of factors of 12, Y represents the set of factors of 9. The shaded region represents the set of factors, oh sorry, the shaded region represents the set of all factors of. Alright, so let's look at the shaded region now. Oh, the shaded region represents the set of all factors of. <coughs> Let's look at it. Let's look at the factors of factors of 12. And the factors of 12 will have our will have 1, 2, 3, 4. So they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And the factors of 9. Will be give us one three nine. So the shaded region represents the set of all factors of. So the shaded read the shaded region is what they have in common, and that would be three. So three would be common to both sets. So our answer would be A. All right. Question eleven. No. 
question 11 is a very similar question because even more that but i've seen this question before it's christian come already but there's a little difference in the question and that's one thing that's one thing that you have to be careful when we see questions that look familiar we have to read them and work them and not to assume what the question is asking read and find out what the question is asking just a little see as a, the 30 students in teacher made class and then you the see and teach Peter Mato have either a dog or a cat or none of the two. All the students who have a cat also have a dog. So all the students who, who have a cat have a dog. Um, if the number of cats, the number of cats is 12, and the number of dogs is 16, which are the following Venn diagrams correctly represent this information. All right, so read again. Which are the following pairs of sets is an example of a disjoint set. So disjoint set means that they have nothing in common. So we have even numbers and odd numbers no can anybody tell me an even number that is an odd number that's the first fishy one so no i think a is the answer without even reading forward multiples of two and multiples of three all right can i have can i have six and three would have six at least six would have debunked this whole numbers and rational numbers yes all whole numbers are rational numbers they are rational and irrational numbers Multiples of 5 and 10 will intersect. So therefore, answer for number 12 is going to be, there, is no, there are no even numbers that are odd numbers, to my knowledge. All right, question 13 says, um, if EC $2.50 is equivalent to US $1, then EC $20 is what in US? All right, so you know you know me already. If you watch my videos before, you know I like to use the converter method. So we have EC is two dollar fifty. Sorry, I'm write that better. No, no, I didn't ask for a zoom. How do I unzoom? Question 13, if EC dollars, $2.50, did I read that correctly? If EC $2.50 is equivalent to US $1, then EC $20 is how many US dollars? Or what is what is 20 EC dollars in US dollars? So if you know, maybe let me make a conversion chart. So we say EC dollars, so EC $2.50, gives me one USD. Alright? So therefore to get from 250 to one dollar, that would mean I'm dividing by two dollar fifty. And to get from one dollar to two dollar fifty it means that I'm multiplying by so I'm multiplying by two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah but of areas. So therefore 20 i'm going from ec i'm going to go from ec dollars to us dollars so i'm going to divide I'm going to divide 20 dollars by so i'm going to divide 20 is going to be divided by two dollars and 50 cents I know that when we're dividing by decimal, we have to make this into a whole number. So we go, so this becomes 25. And then the same multiply here by 10, this becomes 200 over 25. So 200 over 25, that gives us 8. 
So our answer is going to be B. All right, question 14. At a store, three cents on every dollar spent is charged as sales tax. How much is paid as sales tax on a costume which costs $196? Now, how many, you said on every dollar spent. So how many dollars we have? We have $196 and three cents so three cents is going to be it's going to be one nine six multiplied by zero point zero three that's three cents and careful not to mix up three cents with thirty cents so we can go ahead and multiply so we say three sixes eighteen carry one three nines twenty seven and one get twenty eight carry two three ones three and two five now we now have to go ahead and multiply everything we know it's going to have two decimal places so we go one two so we get 5.88 so our answer is going to be a question 15 says the cash price of a television set is 350 dollars when bought on higher purchase a deposit of $35 is required, followed by 12 monthly payments of $30. How much is saved by paying cash? Alright, so we know a higher purchase already. So let's calculate the higher purchase first, and then we can tell how much we save after. So the higher purchase is normally followed by a down payment. So down payment. Plus the monthly installments. All right, and can't bother writing all of the word installments. It's lazy for me. So the what's the down payment? So the down payment is thirty five dollars or the deposit plus the monthly payment going to be what twelve times thirty, and that gives us what. So that's 35 that's 35 so that's 35 times 35 plus 12 times 30 gives us 360 so that's 35 plus 360 that gives us 395 so that's the cost for it on higher purchase. Now the savings now is going to be the HP minus the cash price. That's going to be how much space left because I'm on my right bad. It's going to be 395 minus 350, and that's going to be $45. So we're going to save $45 if we bought it on the cash price. Now, a company employs 20 persons as gardeners and clerks. The mean daily wage of all the employees is $22.40. Each of the 12 gardeners is paid $26 per day. Then the daily amount paid to each of the 8 clerks is... Alright, so we know, let's look at the formula for calculating mean. So we know that the cap, so the mean is equal to the sum of all the values, sum of all the x over n, which is the number of numbers. All right. So we know. Let's write out what we have. So we have the n, which is the number of persons, is twenty, and we know that the mean, which is this little x to the stroke over the top stands for mean, is twenty-two. 40 so 22 dollars 40 cents and we know some of the information at the top here so now so let's let's put it in so we have 22.40 is equal to over 20 hold on let me um write properly so we can have proper space so we have 
22.40 is equal to over 20. And we know that it says 12 of the workers were paid that. So we have 12 times 26 plus plus eight clerks, but we don't know how much the eight, we, we don't know how much eight clerks are being paid. So it would be eight times X. Let's call that unknown X, because we don't know it. Just like when the gardeners then get $26,000 or 12, but then we don't know how much the clerks get. So then we can have this equal to now, so two. So we have 22.40, solving for X now, we're gonna have 22.40, times 20, multiply both sides by 20 to solve. So that's going to give us 4, 4, 8. And over here we have now 12 times 26 plus 8x. And 12 times 26 is 312 plus 8x, we just subtract 312 from both sides, so we have 4, 4, 8 minus 312 is equal to 312 plus 8x minus 312, just solve the equation here, and if you, if you have a shortcut, give me the shortcut in the comment section for this one, so then we have 448 minus 312, and that gives us 136. So we have 136 equals to 8x. And then we're going to divide both sides by 8. And then 136 divided by 8 gives us 17. So therefore, x is equal to 17. So each clerk is paid $17 daily. If you have a shortcut for this one, tell me a shortcut. Alright, question 17. Delana invests $5,000 for two years in an investment scheme. The investment earns compound interest of 8% per annum. What will be the amount of Delano's investment at the end of the two-year period? Now remember, I said that some of the questions are a bit blurred when I try to cut them out, but I guess you can listen to my bad reading and get the question. So we know that to calculate how much is Delano's investment, the amount, we know we look a formula already. So we know that A, which is the amount, and these questions can be worked multiple ways. P open bracket 1 plus R over 100 to the nth. And we know N is for the time, P is for the principal, and R represents the rate. So let's plug in what we have. So A, our principal is what? 5,000 is our principal. Our N is P. So our N, which is the time, is 2 years and 8% rate. So we have 5,000 and then we have plus 1 8 over 100 and n which is 2. So to make this arm in the bracket easier to manipulate or easier to work out we can say a is equal to 5,000 now 1 is the same thing as 100 over 100 just to make it easier to add. So we have 100 over 100, this is 100, plus 8 over 100 to the second power. So this gives me 5,000 times 8, 108, sorry, 108 over 100 square. And we can just go ahead and work it out now. So we're going to have A equal 5,000 times 108 over 100 times 108 over 100. 
and the same thing as same square just re remove the square by expanding it so then we can say 100 into itself goes one time 100 into 5000 goes 50 times and then we can say um 50 into itself one 50 into 100 goes two and then we can say two into 108 2 into itself one so 5, 4, so then we have 54 times 108, and you can write, write that out easy. So 54 times 108, and that gives us $5,832. So the amount that he would have had after a two-year period is going to be $5,832. So that gives us D. Question 18. A car presently valued at $12,000 depreciates at the rate of 10% per annum. What will be the value of the car one year later? Alright, okay, so the one year later is just finding percentage decrease. So you could just easily find 10% of 1200 and then whatever you get, you subtract it from. Whatever you get, you subtract it from 12,000. So let's find 12,000 times 10%. So 10 into itself, 1. 10 into 100 goes 10 times. And then 10 into this leaves us with 1,200. So we know we get our 1,200. And you didn't have to work that out, but that was just me being me. So we're going to have 12,000 minus 1,200 and that's going to give us 11,800. So our answer is going to be B. Alright, question 19. A man's basic wage for a 40 hour work week. A man's basic wage for a 40 hour work week is $160. He is paid $5 per hour for overtime. If he works six and a half hours overtime in a certain week, then his wage for that week is alright. So his wage for that week is going to be so his basic wage is of 40 hour work week and work $160. He's paid $5 per hour for overtime. He worked 6.5 hours overtime in a certain week. Then his wage for that week is alright. So the overtime is 6.5. So we have 6.5 multiplied by $5. So 5, 5, 25, carry a 2. And we have 6, 5, 30, and 2, we have 32. And then one decimal place, so he gets $32.50 extra. So now, and his normal salary would be 160 plus $32.50 and that's going to give him $192.50 so his wage for that week is going to be $192.50 alright question 20 a sales man sells a car for $10,500 if he is paid a commission of 5% for the first one, sorry, for the first 10,000 and 8% on the remainder and the total commission he receives is what? All right, so he's paid 5% for the first 10,000 and 8% on the rest. 
So and he sold a car that it cost ten thousand five hundred. So therefore you're gonna make five percent of ten thousand plus how much is left over from that ten thousand five hundred. So you're gonna make eight percent of that five hundred dollars. So then we can find what is five percent of ten thousand so that's going to be what one hundred into this one hundred into this one hundred times so that's going to be five hundred and then this forty dollars so five hundred plus forty he makes five hundred and forty dollars so answer is going to be b I mean, it looks like a bit, but let's let think it give us money. I don't want to think it all as JMD or UTT or EC. No. Alright, 21. Alita normally saves X dollars each month, but in June, she saved $4 more than twice her usual amount. Alright, so her. Normal amount is X that she saved, but in June she saved four dollars more than twice her usual amount. So twice her usual going to be two X. So she saved four dollars more than twice. So we get two X plus four. And you can debate me on this one. So it's two X plus four. Alita normally saves X dollars each month. But in June she and this this question is also a repeat question. Repeat every year. So Alita normally saves X dollars each month. But in June she saved four dollars more than twice her usual and her usual is X. Yeah, so twice of X plus four. So that answer is going to be C. Question twenty two. Algebra, getting down into the algebra section, my favorite section, bias, but yes, let me count it, the continuum section. Oh, that's so bad. Did I say that out loud? I don't care. Alright, question 22. If m star n is equal to the square root of m cubed minus n square, then 5 star 2 is what? So by comparison, we know that our m is 5 and our n is 2. So the square root now, so we have 5 cube minus 2 square. And 5 cube is 125 minus 4. And that's going to give us the square root of 121. And from our timetable, 11 times 11 gives us 121 therefore the square root of 121 is going to be 11 so our answer is going to be d question 23 uh item 23 refers to the following diagram of a trapezium so this is the trapezium with height 8 as an area of x centimeter x square centimeter square the equation that may be used to find the value of x is all right so first thing we need to know what is the area of a trapezium the area of a trapezium is half open bracket the parallel sides so we call them a plus b times the perpendicular height so half, so what's the area of the trapezium? It's x square centimeter square. And we know that put back the half, the half is a part of the formula. The opposite sides are what? 2 plus x minus 4. And the perpendicular height is given by h. So that h stays there. So we have x square centimeter square is equal to so let's add what in our bracket. So we have half times so two plus x minus four 
move our bracket, we have 2 plus x minus 4. Let's write it in the total another time. Wasting time anyway. So 2 minus 4 gives us negative 2. This thing is saying half x minus 2h. And then we can go ahead and compare. Let's see which, which one matches. So the, the half time, can we write that the half times the h is h over 2. Open bracket x minus 2. Then you have this square, x square, centimeter square. I we don't need, we don't, the centimeter square just the unit. So the answer that match is going to be A. Alright, question 24. So we have minus negative 2q minus 3q. So when two negatives multiply in a positive, so this gives us 2q minus 3q, q, q, q. That gives us negative q. So our answer is going to be C. Alright, this is a bit better, but this is actually 5 to the n plus 1, and this is the n plus 2. Alright, so when we have common base, we add the powers. When we have common base, we add the powers, so what we actually have is 5, n plus 1, plus n plus 2. So n plus n, that gives us 2n, and 1 plus 2, that gives us 3. Remember, you yeah, add like terms, unlike terms cannot be added. So our answer for this one is going to be B, if you can see in the blur here. Alright, question 26. If 5, open bracket, y minus 2, minus 3, open bracket, y plus 4 is 0, then what is the value of y? So we need a value that whatever we plug in for y is going to turn it into zero now you can just um we don't have to work this because we want to multiply that was saving time we could just test the answers here so we could test the answers and we could also work it out but since it's not yet exam time Yes, we can just learn how to work it. So we can have 5 times y that gives us 5y. 5 times negative 2 that gives us negative 10. And then negative 3 times y gives us negative 3y. And negative 3 times positive 4 gives us negative 12 equals to 0. Let's group our like terms. 5y minus 3y that gives us 2y. Negative 10 minus negative, I'm sorry, negative 10 minus 12, that gives us negative 22 is equal to 0. And let's solve for y. So we're going to add 22 to both sides. Regular equation, so we're going to get 2y minus 22 plus 22 is equal to 0 plus 22. I'm just working it along the way. And then you could have 2y is equal to 22 when you divide both sides by 2. So then y is equal to 11. So you could go ahead and do a quick trial and error and test the answers. So our answer would be D. But we can learn how to work on basic equations the same way. Alright, question 27. Item 27 refers to the following vectors, P and Q. So the vector P minus Q is represented by, so P minus Q. So P is 3, 7 minus Q, which is negative 2, 5. So 3 minus negative 2. So the two negative signs multiply, so we get 3 plus 2 gives us 5. 7 minus 5 gives us 2. So our answer we get will be 5, 2. So our answer is C. Items 28 refers to the following diagram of a parallelogram in which EF, so EF, always look for the sign, so EF, so E, F is parallel to 
H G, all right, and E H is parallel to F G, and E F is K, and E H is M. All right, so express E G in terms of K and M. So we want to find E G. E G G G G G G E G E G. All right. So what's the common point? We want to find E G. So we know that. Let's put in what what we know. We know that E F is parallel to H G. So that means that here also is K in that direction. Now we want to find E G. So to find E G, we go from E to H and then H to G. So we go from E to H plus H to G, and that's going to give us our E G. Why well, handwriting is very beautiful today. I don't know about your handwriting, but it's beautiful today. It's beautiful, a bit too beautiful. So from E to G, sorry, E to H is M. And H to G is K. So therefore, M plus K or K plus M gives us E G. So therefore, answer is going to be A. All right. It says if if five. X, Y gives us 4, 10, 20, then the values of X and Y. So basically it's saying that they are equal vectors. So therefore, so we can work it out like this. So this is going to give us 5 times X, so we get 5X. Five, 5 times Y gives us 5Y is equal to 4 times 10, which is 40, and 4 times 20 which is 80. So therefore, 5 since they're equal, then we can say that 5x is equal to 40. Or we know that 8, 5, 40, that means the x is equal to 8. Or we know that 5y is equal to 80. And we know that um, divide both sides by 80. Sorry, divide both sides by 5. So y is going to be equal to 16. So therefore, x is 8 and y is equal to 16. So our answer is going to be B. Question 30. All right, so the item 30 refers to the following matrices A and B. Now, it says A is 1, 3, 3, 0, negative 3, 5, B is that. So the product of A, B is, now in order for us to multiply matrices, we have to check its compatibility, right? So this is a two row, three column, and this is row by column. Again, we have three rows and two columns. So we know that the number of rows in the first matrix must be equal to, sorry, number of columns, columns, I'm very sorry, number of columns in the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. So naturally, we can see that they are both equal. So hence, we are going to get a two by two matrix. So two by two matrix is going to be left. So let's go ahead and multiply. So we have 1, 3, 3, 0, negative 3, 5, times 3, 2, 0, 0, 1, 5. And we need a 2 by 2 matrix. So we know so 1 grand come here, so 1 come here, so 1 come here, so 1 come here. So, so we have row 1 by column 1. 
So we have 1 times 3, 1 times 3 plus 3 times 2 plus negative 3 times 0. That's the first one. Then we're going to find next element. Next element is going to be anything that row 1 times column 2. So it's going to be 1, so we're here now, so 1 times 0, 1 times 0 plus 3 times 1 plus negative 3 times 5. Now look at what's going to come here. So what's going to come here is going to be row 1, sorry, row 2, column 1. So you're multiplying row 2 by column 1, which is what we already have circled here. So, so it's going to be 3 times 3 plus 0 times 2 plus 5 times 0. And then we want to find what's going to come here. What's going to come here is going to be what? Row 2, column 2. So here is going to be row 2, column 2. So we have 3 times 0 plus 0 times 1 plus 5 times 5. So let's go ahead and work out the results now. I just put comma just to break to give us a space. There's no need for a comma. So then we have 1 times 3 plus, that's 3, plus 6. So that gives us 7. 7. Did I say something wrong? Did I do something wrong? Oh. 1 times 3, 3 plus 6, 9. Come here, so I'm not with no 7. Mistake. We're very sorry. Mental lapse. Then I have now 3, 3 is 9 plus 0 plus 0, that's 9 again. Then we have 1 times 0, that's 0. Then you have 3, 1 is 3 plus negative 15, so that gives us positive 12. And positive 12. Yeah, positive 12. And then, no man, it had gone. Negative 12. 15 is larger looking one. So negative 12. Oh, gee. Very sorry. I'm still not, not going to erase that. 3 times 0, 0, 0, 25, 25, 5, 5, 25. So our answer is going to be D. And the link could I catch students if they just take off the um negative of i12 as one of the option them all right so our answer is going to be d because sometimes we slip up the little basic rules all right 31 if a speedboat if I, if I, sorry if it took a speedboat nine hours to travel a distance of 1080 kilometers what was its average speed in kilometers per hour so we know that speed is equal to distance over time. So speed is equal to distance over time. So we have the time which is 9 hours. That's the time which is in hours. And the distance is in kilometer per hour. So there is no conversion here. This is our distance. So speed is equal to all right so 9 into 10 goes one time carry 2 nines 18 and 0 so we get 120 kilometer per hour so our answer is going to be C question 32 it says Item 32 refers to the following diagram of, of a trapezium. It says the perimeter of the trapezium is, and they want the answer in millimeter. So let's add up what we have. We have 0 0.41 plus 0 0.12 plus 0 0.21 plus 0 0.18. 
So we have 8 and 2, 10 and 2, 12. And then we have 3, 4, 5 and 4. That give us 9. And then 0. So we're just going, this is going to be 0 0.92 m. This is meters. And it wants it in millimeters. So to convert from meters to millimeters, we're going to multiply by 1,000. And to multiply by 1,000, we're going to get 920 millimeters. So then our answer is going to be D. Alright, now item 33 refers to the following circle with center O. So we see our circle with our center. And then we have the angle here, 120. So if the circumference, the circumference of the circle is 15 centimeter, then the length of the minor arc. Now the minor arc is normal, the smaller arc are the arc with the smallest angle. Alright, so this would be, in this case our minor arc is going to be the arc with the angle of 120. Alright? In centimeters. Therefore, what we know, how we find arc length or length of arc. So we know that the arc length is actually a fraction of the circumference. So the arc length or the length of the arc is actually a fraction of the circumference. And so the fraction is going to be 120 of 360 times 2 pi r. And we know that 2 pi r represents the circumference. Now, it tells us that the circumference is, the circumference is 15. It's going to be 120 over 360 times 15. So therefore, our answer is going to be B. Alright, question 34 says, an aircraft leaves A at 1600 hours and arrives at B at 1930 hours, traveling at an average speed of 5,050 kilometers per hour. A and B are in the same time zone. The distance from A to B in kilometers is. Alright, so this is asking, we have the same speed equal distance over time. And the question is asking us to find the distance. So speed is equal to distance over time. So therefore, the distance is going to be equal to speed multiplied by time. Now, what's our speed? 550 kilometers per hour. So 550 kilometers per hour times the time. So then we're going to know that between 1600 hours and 1930 hours, we're going to get what? 3.5 hours. So the time is going to be. 3.5 hours and then we're going to multiply so hours cancel hours so we're left with our kilometer so 550 times 3.5 so 550 times 3.5 and we can go again into this long multiplication I don't want to work so then our answer is going to be One thousand nine hundred and twenty-five kilometer. You work it out and check my answer and tell me to get it correct. All right, question thirty-five says item thirty-five refers to the following diagram, which shows a circle with center O, a sector, and the major and minor arc indicated. Now, the length of the major arc, Fe, is 40. And what is the circumference of the circle in centimeter square? 
это по органам, которые эти... Question 35. Item 35 refers to the following diagram, which shows a circle with center O, a sector, and the major and minor arcs indicated. So the major arc is in the dotted line, so the minor arc, which is the one with the smaller angle, is going to be 60 degrees. That means that the angle of the major arc, we know all angles in a circle are to give 360 degrees. So the angle in the major arc is going to be 300 degrees. Alright, so this is the length of the major arc. Fe is 40 centimeters. What is the circumference of the circle in centimeters? Now let's write a formula that shows the relationship between the length of arc and the circumference of the circle. So we looked at it earlier. We said the length of arc 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 length is equal to an angle over 360 times 2 pi r and we don't necessarily that 2 pi r represents the circumference so hence what are we given we're given the length of the major arc so we're working with the angle of the major arc that's going to be 40 is equal to 300 over 360 and we know 2 pi r is the circumference so we can just call it c because we want to find c we want to find the circumference so then we can go ahead and solve so we have 300 over 360 c is equal to 40 so to solve for C, we're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is 360 over 300. So that's going to be 360 over 300. So whatever way you find it easier to manipulate your algebra, go ahead and do it that way. So hence, C is equal to, let's over here and manipulate now. So we know that 10 into 300 goes 30 times and 10 into 40 goes 4 times. So 10 into 30, sorry, yeah, 10 into 30 goes 3 times and 10 into 360 goes 36 times. 3 into itself, 1, couldn't just say, whatever, well, that's alright. 3 into 36 goes 12. 412 that gives us 48 so therefore the circumference of the circle is going to be 48 so we use what we have we know that the length of the arc length of arc is angle by 360 times 2 pi r we know that 2 pi r is the circumference of this circle so we can call it c Go ahead and solve for C. So therefore you can say 2 pi r is equal to 48 or C which is the circumference is equal to 48. Question 36. Alright, so the volume item 6 refers to the following diagram which shows a cuboid. <coughs> the volume of the cuboid is 320 centimeter cube. So at the volume and its height is 5 cm. If the cuboid has a square base, what is the length of one side of the base? So what, what's the relationship? You know, we, have, we can use that formula that represents the relationship between the area and the volume. So we know that volume is equal to the area of the cross section. times the length or the height. That's what you want to call it. You can say length or height. Same thing. Alright. Teacher can spell. That's alright. So volume now. 
it gave us it gave us the volume volume is 320 oh i'm writing the wrong number 320 320 centimeter cube and the area of the cross section now we told you that the it's a square base square base done so area of the cross section is going to be so you say that one on area of the square so five times five Oh, incorrect. Can just do this. Item 36 refers to the following diagram, which shows a cuboid. So we have our cuboid here. The volume of the cuboid is 320 centimeter cube, and the height is 5 centimeter. If the cuboid has a square base, what is the length of one side of the base? So it has a square base. So telling you that the area is going to be some square, area of a square down there. So all right, so let's write your formula that shows the relationship between volume and area and the length or height. So we have volume is equal to the area of cross section of the square of the shape here on the cross section times length or you can say height no the volume is 320 centimeter cube it didn't give you the area of the cross section, so we can leave it as it and give us the height. So the height is 5. So we can find the area of the cross section by dividing both sides by 5. So 320 divided by 5, and that's going to give us 6, 5. 30 and carry 2, so we get 64 is equal to the area the cross section now what does it say about the cross section now, the cross section is square base square base so therefore because it's a square base we know that the area of a square is represented by l square so then we can say okay 64 is equal to L squared. In order to find the length of one side, we're going to find the square root of 64. So the square root of 64, 8, 8 gives us 64. So the square root of 64 is going to be 8. So we get 8 centimeters. So that would be the length of one side of the base. All right, question 37. The area of a triangle is 60 centimeters square and its base is 12. What is the perpendicular height of the triangle in centimeters? So all these questions are basically just testing your transposition skills, you know. Alright, so area of triangle is equal to half base times height so let's put in what we have now the area is 60 half the base is 12 and height is represented by h so we can half of 12 is 6 so we have 6 h on this side so we can divide both sides by 6 so then that's going to give us 10 so the value of the height or the, the length of the perpendicular height is going to be 10 centimeters. Our answer is B. Question 38. A square has the same area as a rectangle with sides. Let's 
with size of length 9 cm and 16 cm. What is the length of the side of the square? So first key it says that the, a square has the same area as the rectangle with sides. So the area of a square because it is, is um, whatever I can call it, length square, which is equal to the area of a rectangle, which is length times width. So L square is equal to length is 9 by 16. So 9 times 16 gives us, sorry, 144. Yeah, we'll go ahead on this L. So then, in order to find element of the square root of both sides, so therefore L is equal to 12. You just feel that, feel that run through this too fast. Let's look at it again. L square is equal to length times width. Why am I doing this? So L square is going to be equal to 9 times 16. And 9 times 16 is 144. So L square is equal to 144 to find the value of L and take the square root of both sides. So L is equal to 12. Don't know why I work it twice, but Sometimes my head is like that. Run ahead and move on. Anyway, question 39. Items 39 refers and 40 refer to the following frequency distribution, which shows the average mass in kilogram of a group of children in a school. So we have the mass and we have the frequency. The upper limit of the modal class is. So the modal class width is going to be like class with the highest frequency. So the highest frequency here is 40. So we have the lower limit, so lower limit, and we have the upper limit. So the upper limit of the modal class is 60. And so how many children have a mass? greater than 40 kilograms so great, great, greater than 40 is going to be here 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 so we have 24 plus 40 plus 18 and that gives us 82 so 82 children have a mass greater than 40 kilograms Question 41, items 41 refers to the following table, which shows the frequency of scores obtained by students on a test. So, we have the scores and we have the frequency, which is called the students here, because they use students to measure the data. So, the modal score. Now, the modal score is the one with the highest frequency are the most students got that score so we have 12 students here who got a score of 8 so therefore the modal score is going to be 8 because 12 represents the frequency all right so don't mix up the frequency with the score so the modal score is 8 because 12 students got a score of 8 Items 42 refers to the following diagram of a cumulative frequency curve which show the marks obtained by 200 students on a test. The median of the marks scored by 200 students. So we know median is halfway, so half the cumulative frequency. So half of 200 is 100. So you're going to find 100 now on your scale. So if here is 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, so right here, so it's going to be 100. So use your ruler, take a look at that headline, carry it across. Boops, where it to come down a little bit. Little bit. Probably need a ruler for this, but I don't have a ruler. Don't follow my dancing line here, so. So you say 30, 31, 32, 35, 40. It is 35, 36, 37, 
it's not 37 exact, it's a little bit in between, so we can have 37.5. So our answer is going to be C. Use your ruler and do this correctly, because you know, I don't, ha I don't have a ruler to use in the PowerPoint here, so just use your ruler. Alright, question 43. Item 43 refers to the following bar chart which show the ages of children who took part in a survey. And so the reading is very terrible. And then it says how many children took part in the survey? So we have the number of children. So here is three. And these are the ages down here. So three, four, two, five, and this looks like one. So we can add them up together. 3, 4, plus 2, plus 5, so then, uh, 5, 10, 15. So we get 15 students took part in the survey. And this question looks like a repeated question. Alright, question 44. 600 students write an exam. The probability of a randomly selected student failing the exam is one-fifth. How many students are expected to pass? Now, if the probability of students that are expected to fail is one-fifth, that means they expect four-fifths to pass, right? Because the entire whole, one-fifth and four-fifth, will give you the whole of 600 students, all right? So then we expect four-fifths to pass. So what is four-fifths? of 600 students i will go ahead so 5 into 12 1 5 into 60 goes 12 times and zero so 120 so 4 times 120 4 0 0 sorry 4 0 0 4 2 is 8, 4 ones, 4. So they're expecting 480 students to pass. Alright, question 45. Which of the following equation represents a linear function? Now we know linear, the highest power is 1. And we do then can multiply by now. So A is out, this is out, this is out. So by elimination, C would be our answer. By elimination. Anything with the square power of that. You said these multiply each other? No, that's not part of it either. So therefore, C. Question 46. The set of all appearance below represents a relation that is a function. Which are the following points when added to the set which form a relation that is not a function? Alright, first and foremost. We normally look at the input value, input, right? So normally we don't want any repetition of an input value. That's going to spoil the one-to-one -one relation, all right? So we're looking for one that has us the e where one of the input is the same. And as we go, two, we already have an input of two. So another two, we're going to make it, um, 2 more than to 7 and 2 more than to 8. So that will match up the 1 to 1 relationship. So therefore, A would be the answer. We don't have any 1 there already. We don't have any 0. We don't have any negative 8. So all of the inputs literally match to only 1 and 1 element in the co-domain or domain or in the range. Sorry, in the range. One element in the range. Alright, question 47. Oh, before I, go, before I go on to question 47, just note for this question, in case I didn't say it clearly, we can't have similar input. Alright, so if you input 2, you input 2 only once. So you can't have the same input twice. It will make it not one to one. Cool? Item 47 refers to the following arrow diagram. The arrow diagram above describes the relation. So we normally observe the arrow diagram before we go ahead and even, uh, even look at what they have there. So 8 maps to 2 and 8 map to 4. Hmm. 9 map to 3 and 
10 maps to 2. So the R diagonal above describes the relation y is more than x. No, y is not more than x. y is a multiple of x. Hmm. Let's, let's read the rest. x is a factor of y. No, not a factor of y. x is a multiple of y. Let's look at x is a multiple of y. No, so, so let's look at the multiple one. So we don't have nothing to do with no factors and no more than. So we have y is a multiple of x and x is a multiple of y. So let's observe keenly. y is not a two is not, is not a multiple of eight so that would be out so then x is a multiple of y eight is a multiple of two and eight is also a multiple of four so therefore x is a multiple of y so the correct answer is going to be d all right this is question 48 what is the gradient of the straight line 2y is equal to negative 3x minus 8. So what we're going to do, try to transpose this equation in the form y equal mx plus c. Alright? So we're going to try to get this equation in the form y equal mx plus c. So we have 2y is equal to negative 3x minus 8. So we can divide both sides by 2 or multiply both sides by a half. So we get y is equal to negative 3x over 2 minus 8 over 2. So this will give us y is equal to negative 3 over 2x minus 4. Now the gradient now is m represents the gradient. So therefore, when by comparison, by comparison, we realize that our gradient is going to be negative 3 over 2. So question 49, substitution. If h of x is equal to 3x minus 2 over 5, then h of 6 is, so h, sorry, h of negative 6. So 3 times negative 6 minus 2 over 5. So 3 times negative 6 is negative 18 minus 2 over 5. So h of negative 6 is equal to negative 20 over 5. So that gives us negative 4. So our answer is going to be A. All right. Item question 50 about item 50. The range of f of x is such that uh, the range of f of x maps to negative x square for the domain zero for the domain the set of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Alright, so negative x square. So that means so we can we can work it out. So these are the input. So we input x and we must press it to negative x. So we, make, so we put in negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 2. And the negative right, so we're going to get what? This is going to give us negative 4. And negative 1. Negative 1 square is going to give us positive 1 times negative give us negative 1 again I feel that record everything on my head everything all right let's start to see it and then I have 0 which is going to give us 0 and then we're going to have positive 1 so negative times positive 1 square that gives us negative 1 hold on we'll get negative 1 Hold on. Okay, yeah. Negative one, and then we have two, 
and 2 square is going to give us 4 and a negative 4 hold on negative 2 times negative positive 4 times negative so we get negative 4 negative 1 times negative 1 that gives us positive 1 times the and 0 give us 0 so we have positive 1 now I'm going to just not answer how much negative 4 is 0 0 1 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2 is. Alright, so the range is the so output values and the domain are the input values. Alright, so we have our input. So our input is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And the range, our output values are sometimes values. If I refer to as the code domain, we're not getting technical now, I'm just being disgusting now. It goes up to negative x squared. So let's plug that in now. So negative 2, so negative times negative square, that gives us negative 4. And then negative times negative 1 square, that gives us negative 1, 0, 0. And then we have 1, so negative 1 times 1 square, that gives us negative 1. And negative times 2 square, that gives us negative 4. So the domain is just going to be 0, negative 1, negative 4. So then that would match with B. So negative 4, negative 1, 0. They set off negative 4, negative 1, 0. All right, question 51. <laughs> question 51. A line L is parallel to the line 2x minus 5y minus 8 equals to 0. Now, this question, <coughs> sorry, look familiar. And they may be exact questions, but I would recommend just read them, work them out again, just to be safe. All right, don't sort any answers. Because they can jumble the answers, so don't sort anything, work them out, do them. Alright, so we'll open about parallel lines of the same gradient, so now parallel lines, lines have the same gradient. So we're going to transpose our equation in the form y equal mx plus c. So let's go ahead and transpose in the form. And then we're going to do all of the working out. I guess we're going to do some. So we're going to, all right, let's do all of the working out for teaching purposes only. So 2x, don't go for exam with all of this. But for teaching purposes, let's do it the long way. So we're going to add 8 on both sides of the equation. We have 2x minus 5y minus 8 plus 8 is equal to 0 plus 8. So now we have 2x minus 5y is equal to 8. Next, this is in the form y equal mx plus c. We're going to move our 2x. We're going to subtract 2x from both sides. So then we're going to have 2x minus 2x minus 5y is equal to 8 minus 2x. So we're left with negative 5y is equal to 8 minus 2x. We can go ahead and put our 2x in front. So we're going to have negative 5y is equal to negative 2x plus 8. We'll just turn it around because addition is commutative. So then we have now want to divide both sides by negative 5 or multiply both sides by negative 1 fifth. Same thing as dividing by negative 5. So then we have negative 2 over negative 5x plus 8 over negative 5. So negative divided by negative gives a positive, so y is equal to 2 fifth x and negative 8 over 5. Now, 
parallel lines have the same gradient, so the gradient is going to be positive 2 over 5, so our answer is going to be C. Alright, the values of x at the point where y equals 4x minus x squared intersects y equals 0. So, once you want to find the values of x, for any equation that they give us, let this let y be zero and it tell us that intersect where y is equal to zero. So we're going to have zero equal 4x minus x squared. Some students like to turn around and make a difference, but 4x minus x squared equals to zero. So let's factor out by some factorization. So we factor out x is common to both. So we have 4 minus x is equal to zero. So now we have x is equal to 0 and 4 minus x is equal to 0. So this solve already x is equal to 0. So anyone want to have x equal to 0, we can't cross that out. Alright, so we have 3 more left. Then we have now 4 minus x. We're going to solve for x. We're going to use negative x. We're going to be equal to negative 4. Divide by both sides by negative 1 or multiply both sides by negative 1 x is going to be equal to positive 4. So when x is 0, x is 0 and 4. So therefore, answer would be A. Alright, item 53, also a question that looks like it has been repeated many times. So item 53 refers to the following diagram which shows a translation. So A, so 2, 5, 4, 6. So each the translation is going to be 4, 6 minus 2, 5. 4 minus 2, 2. And 6 minus 5, 1. You can test it if it works for this. So if you add 2 and add 1, so it's 2, 1. So our translation vector is going to be 2, 1. Now let's look at item 54 refers to the following transversal diagram in which PQ and RS are parallel which are the following statement best describes the relation between P and Q so we know we call them regular we call them Z angles Lehman turn so you know that Z angles are equal so therefore P is equal to Q Alright, item 55, another repeated question, but still read just to make sure. A ship sail 8 kilometers due east from A to B. It then sails 6 kilometers due north to C. So me like me like draw my join. Now I look over here so we can me do my own join and then we compare. So a ship sail, so ship is here and it sails north. Put a knot line anywhere, start a knot line 8 kilometers due east to B. So it's A to B. It then sails 6 kilometers due north to C. So knot line 59 and it's 6 kilometers due north. This is 8. 6 kilometers due north to C. There should be a knot line here also and to C. So it says which diagram best, which diagram, yes, laugh at me stuttering. And if you reach this far in the video, please like, comment, subscribe, share, critique and criticize. Do everything. Alright, so which diagram best represents the part of the ship? Now we can look at it. Na, 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 na. Not that. No, it never go south. Not that. No, it from move from B to C. So therefore, the answer is C. All right. Item fifty six refers to the following diagram of a circle. All right. So this looks like O is the center of the circle. Then Y is. Alright, so O is the center. Alright, so now the angle at the circumference is half the size of the angle at the center. Our angle at the center is twice the size of the angle at the circumference. So if here is 50, 
then here is going to be 100 degrees. So it's a circle theorem using a theorem. Alright, item 57 refers to the following diagram which shows the graph of the line y equal x. So we have a line y equal x. Now, if the line y equal x is rotated anticlockwise about O origin through a 90 de degree angle, then its image is. Alright, so you know, it's a 90 degree, this will be 90 degree, right? So that means that here, so about 45 degrees. So if you're rotating it anti clockwise, you go in this direction. Alright, so if here's our 45 degree, then the next 45 degree angle is going to be right here. So, so here's about 45 again. So the line going to end up right here. So, and this line is going to be the line y equal negative x. So then the image is going to be y equal negative x. And here's our 45. If I rotate it this way, yeah, so we get y equal negative x. Question 58, another repeated question. In, I'm just looking for the answer and say, oh, next repeated question. In triangle ABC, angle A is X and angle B is 2X. What is the size of angle C? So the triangle ABC. So A is what? X. C is 2x, sorry, B is 2x, so define C is going to do what? C is going to be equal to 180 minus the sum of 2x plus x, so it's going to be 180 minus 3x, so our answer is going to be D. Question 59, another familiar looking question. Look like it re repeats to the trick question, then CXC now change them. Look like don't change them. Make my students and go through, don't change them. Give them back, same way. <laughs> All right, item 59 refers to the following diagram which shows the angle of depression of a point X from D is 35 degrees. So therefore the angle of depression is equal to angle of elevation. So here will also be 35 degrees. If X is 12 meters from Y, then the height of Y is D, which is here, so in meters is. So we're going to have the opposite side. And we have the adjacent side. This is tan. So tan, the angle is 35 is equal to opposite which is yz sorry let me just hold on end up skipping instead back mm -hmm. sorry about that i was looking for my eraser all right so we have tan the angle is equal to opposite which is or yz over the adjacent which is 12. So in order to find y is going to multiply both sides by 12. So we're going to have 12 tan 35 and that gives us y z. So our answer is going to be, well, the only one with tan, so our answer is going to be c. All right, now item 60 refers to the following right angle triangle so which trig ratio is equal to 4 over 8 all right so 4 we have the opposite over the hypotenuse so which one use that so we have sine angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse so sine x Opposite which is 4 over the hypotenuse which is 8 So therefore it's sine. So sine x All right, and I believe I believe that's all folks if you have reached the last question like Subscribe comment share critique criticize do something All right, thank you for watching Oh, I'm
time before I fully close off. See the next video now. See the next video. Yeah, man. Click the one up on the left side and the one up on the right side. Share them.